A concave mirror has a focal length of 34.3 centimeters. What is its radius of curvature? And B, locate the image when the object distance is 100, and 100 centimeters. Indicate the side of the mirror with the sign of your answer. Then next, describe the properties of the image when the object is 100 centimeters. It's a real, virtual, upright, inverted, select all that apply. And C, locate the image when the object distance is 10 centimeters. Indicate the side of the mirror with the sign of your answer. Describe the properties of the image when the object is 10 centimeters. Real, virtual, upright, or inverted. Select all that apply. So the first thing it wants simply is the radius of curvature. So I'm going to I'm going to do some shrinking right here so I have some room to, to write. The first thing it asks for is the radius of curvature, and it gives us the focal length. So we can just do the definition of the focal length. R, 1 half R is equal to the focal length. And then we just solve for R, so R equals 2 times the focal length. And given my numbers, I got that R is equal to 68.6 centimeters. Then it says, where's the image if we place an object 100 centimeters in front of it? So we've got to use the mirror equation. And so we get 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals, and we can use 2 over R or 1 over F. I prefer 1 over F in this case because um, it gives us the focal point. And since it's asking us to locate the image, we'll isolate the term, we'll isolate the term with Q in it. So we get 1 over Q equals 1 over f minus 1 over p. And then I'll find a common denominator between these two. So 1 over q is equal to p minus f over pf. And I did that by multiplying, uh, by multiplying this term by f over f and this term by p over p, and then subtracting the terms. Then I have to take the inverse of both sides. So q is equal to p times f over p minus f. Now you can't switch these around. The negative sign has to be uh, has to precede the focal point. When you plug in the numbers, you get that q is equal to 52.207 centimeters. Now q is positive. That means that in our case, uh, it's a concave mirror. If q is positive, then the image must be a real image, real instead of virtual. But, so let's go and see what the ma that does to the magnification. So magnification is equal to negative Q over P. And so if Q is positive, that turns M into a negative number. If M is negative, then the image is inverted. So it's inverted. So I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to post on my blog. So if you don't know where my blog is, it's in the, it should be in a link in the about section of this video. I'm going to post on my blog a little chart that has all the, all the rules to tell you whether something's real, virtual, upright, inverted, um, what the uh, whether it's a concave or a convex mirror, and all the different rules for lenses as well in a small little chart. So check that out if you're having trouble remembering. And that brings up another good point. If you're watching this video right now and you've looked for it on the blog, that's because right now I'm making like 17 videos in a row, and I, I may forget to do that by the end of the last video. So just leave me a message and remind me. Now for the second part, it all you, you don't have to do anything else. You just have to substitute your 10 instead of a 100. And you plug in your 10 to first this equation, and you get that Q is equal to, in this case, it should be equal to a negative, negative 14.1152. So it's negative 14.1152. Since Q is negative, that means your image is virtual and your magnification will be upright. So, following the same rules we just looked at. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So, you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.